They say dogs don't win here, but guess what? We ain't that type of dog. UConn's the number one team in the country. They're undefeated, but guess what? They ain't played us yet. They say the crowd is loud and it's not gonna stop all game long. Well, just wait till we hit lots of threes all game long. This environment, this atmosphere, it's going to be unbelievable. You have to earn your respect. UConn has theirs. Tonight, we get ours. Let's go. These players have made this walk countless times. Years ago, I made it too. And the closer you get to these doors and you hear the crowd and you smell the smells, the energy comes, the butterflies are there, the adrenaline starts pumping. And you have a confidence that you have gotten from being prepared by the best coach in the country. And if you face some adversity, you know 10,000 strong have your back. How strong is the home court advantage in Gamble Pavilion? Not a single player on this UConn team has ever lost here in their home. With that, we welcome you to Big Monday, presented by Joseph A. Bank, number one Connecticut and number four Louisville in one of the most anticipated games of the season. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. One of the great college basketball atmospheres here at Gamble Pavilion. You just heard Rebecca and Kara give you some great insight about what it's like when it's number one against number four. Now let's talk about some of the matchups and players and someone who's in some rare air like Holly Rowe is Gabby Williams. That's right. At 5'11", Gabby Williams is one of the most athletic players in the country with a 36-inch two-step vertical. I wanted to give you some perspective. She can reach about 11 inches above the rim. This is about how high this women can be effective around the rim. Where that tips off is where she can get her hand on balls, deflections, getting to different balls that some of the athletes on the court just can't get to. Look at how she is able to use that. She said, you know, I always knew I could jump. I just didn't know what a weapon it could be until last year. She is now making that a weapon on the regular. Tonight, she'll be asked to guard a much taller player, Maisha Hines Allen at 6'2", and Gabby Williams has shown that her rare air is making a difference for UConn. Holly, what a way to bring us into Campbell Pavilion for UConn and Louisville. Assistant coaches, Shayna, Marissa Mosley, and Susan Hinton. We talked about the great atmosphere here at Gamble. The longest win streak in the country, active right now at home, the third longest in NCAA history, 75 consecutive home wins between Hartford and Storrs, 47 straight here at Gamble Pavilion for UConn. Louisville right now has the second longest active road win streak in the country at 13 straight. The number one streak belongs to UConn. Gino Ariema, 33rd season. At the helm of this Connecticut program, 11-time national champion, third most wins all time. Great success against Louisville. Jeff Walls, 0-13 lifetime against UConn. Louisville is 1-9 in its last 10 games against the number one team in the country. All nine losses to Connecticut. Fifth time that Louisville and UConn meet as top five opponents. UConn has won all four by an average of 24 points. First meeting in four years. Let's go. And Kia Nurse wins the tip for Connecticut. D. Kantner, Kim Inoue, Joseph Vasili, our officiating crew. Knocked away by Maisha Hines Allen. And Louisville forces a quick turnover. One of the top players in the nation is Asia Durr. 
Got the offensive rebound. Erica Carter gives Louisville the lead. Oh, that's huge. I mean, that's a big time shot because your question for Louisville coming in offensively is who outside of Asia Durr can come in here and put up a big number? Someone's going to have to. So it's a great sign for Louisville that Carter gets on the board. Nafisa Collier. Louisville, 25 and one on the season. Their lone loss came at home in a rock fight, a one point loss to Florida State a couple of weeks ago. Carter is off target, and there is Gabby Williams snatching her first rebound. Samuelson to Collier. Connecticut's so dangerous when they get out in transition. That was Jeff Wall's biggest concern for his Louisville team in here with Durr with the basketball. Connecticut was working on their one and a half defense today. Anytime Durr or Heinz Allen have the ball, they want one and a half players on them. Tough take by Jasmine Jones. Katie Lou Samuelson. A blocking foul called on Sam Furyk. So this is what you're talking about, Rebecca. It's tr still transition. I mean, Furing not there in time, and her heels were on the line in the restricted area. But it's not just the fast break where you have numbers. It's also kind of that secondary action where they spread you out. All five players for UConn sprint the floor every time, and they all can shoot. And so you get spaced out. And Katie Lou took advantage of that with just that eye fake towards the basket. Her defender lunged, and she got to the rim. Samuelson missed a game with an ankle injury against Temple, has been outstanding the last six games. She gives UConn the lead. Hey, look at Kia Nurse guarding Asia. It's a face guard. Yep. It's a face guard wherever she is. Watch for that matchup all night as Durr tries to get open. There's Kia Nurse right in that passing lane. With the block, Nurse. Williams saved it. Carter has it, but I believe Carter had it in front court and then threw it into the back court. You see Kia Nurse Karajer talking about her being all over her here. Once again, front court, you can't even put one of the three things, either the, your, the basketball or your feet, into the back court. But UConn defensively was working on, if anything, force Asia Durr to go back door. At least there's help there. Traveling violation on Gabby Williams. Well, the thing with Kia Nurse is that she has tremendous size yeah. as a guard as well. So right. she got her fingertips on that shot. She can deter Asia, even though Asia has that slight fade. Back door, her long arms able to get the ball. Nurse to Samuelson. Open for three. Again, transition, right? Again, transition action. Furing with the help from Samuelson, and it's an offensive foul this time on Furing. Samuelson has won those two battles to start this game. So Keeners denying the up pass, making Asia Durr go back to her, but she can recover. Carrie, you've talked in previous games how difficult that is to do, and here, transition Katie Lou Samuelson as good as anyone in the country at knocking down that shot yeah that's one of the surest things in basketball not just women's college basketball that's Katie Lou making an open three the only thing surer than that is Kia Nurse making <laughs> an open three. Samuelson currently leads the country at 48 percent just percentage points ahead of Kia Nurse yep. at second in the country and then we've got Asia Durr who's a great three-point shooter for Louisville as well you know, the thing with that back door, Rebecca, is it's got to be the perfect pass. You can still get it in there, but it's got to be the perfect pass. And Louisville, their pass has been a little bit off target the last few possessions. And that doesn't get you open looks against a UConn team defensively. Williams muscles it in against Carter. I like the substitution of Evans here by Jeff Walls because she's a player that can get by someone on the offensive end. It's number one in red for Louisville. Freshman out of Gary, Indiana. 
You know, my first thought, Rebecca, watching Louisville, their starting five against this UConn team defensively was, other than Durr, who can get by somebody? Mm -hmm. Who can create a play? And I didn't have an answer besides Durr. Evans, to me, is one player on his roster that can get by someone if she needs to. And she gets it done on the defensive end yeah, as well. A little more pressure. So she's on danger field, a point. Collier, foul up. Jeff Walls, timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. And in part by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hunt. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jeff Walls of Louisville telling his team in the huddle just then, relax, we've got four turnovers. Seven of UConn's 11 points are off our turnovers. We've just got to calm down, use your screens, make better passes, be more efficient. And Holly, a rocky start out of that timeout. Another charge drawn by Connecticut, and Maisha Hines-Allen picks up her first foul. Well, this is actually really nice ball handling by Maisha to get by Gabby Williams. And UConn, their weak side defense, it was Katie Lou Samuelson on Furing, and then it was Nafisa Collier with Maisha Hines Island. So great alert weak side D for Connecticut. Dangerfield off the screen. There's Hines Allen, the leading rebounder in the ACC. A good job by Carter to run it down and save it. Oh. But she was trapped. Gabby Williams. How similar did that look to the play that Holly showed from the South Carolina game in the open? What an athletic play by, an, by such a great athlete. I thought she might dunk it. Yeah. <laughs> She's she was, working on she was trying to shoot around today. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Heinz Allen. And look at Louisville, not really sending anybody to the offensive glass so they can get back in transition defense. Look at the difference of the ease of Connecticut being able to pass from player to player from what we see on the other end of the floor. Yep, a lot of ISO, and that's what Connecticut defense turns you into. Dura has missed her first three shots. Samuelson, offensive foul. That's good transition defense by Heinz Allen to get back. Uh, this, Holly talked about this in our open, the athleticism. Look at that. I mean, that's incredible. Those instincts, and you combine that with an elite athlete, and you get Gabby Williams, who is a terror defensively. National Defensive Player of the Year last year. A high school track and field start. She did all the jumps, high jump, triple jump, and you can see it well on display in a UConn uniform. Well, Heinz Allen had the smaller danger field on her. Carter off target. Evans snares the tip, and it's recovered by Carter. Evans, no. One for ten from the floor are the Cardinals. Louisville's going to have to make jump shots tonight. Williams races around Carter for the rebound and then gets the assist to Collier. And right now for Louisville, it's contested jump shots. Those are the only looks that they're getting at the basket. Toughest shot to make. Durr runs into the double team and a traveling violation, another Louisville turnover. Love what we got coming up on Wednesday. It's the crossover. We're going to have Hubie Brown and Jay Billis on the Duke game. Clippers and Celtics is going to have Mark Jackson and Dickie V. I'm going to head to Auburn this week. I've got P.J. Carlissimo and Dan Dockage, and then the great Bill Walton and Doris Burke are on Warriors Trailblazers. That's the crossover on Wednesday.
the Clippers Celtics will have a very special team in attendance. This Louisville team is going to bus up to Boston tonight because they play there on Wednesday. They will go to that Clippers Celtics game. Jeff Walls got special permission from the NCAA to get them a suite and feed his players there at the game. So they can't wait to see uh, the Clippers and the Celtics up close and personal on Wednesday or Tuesday. More good transition from Connecticut Hall. 16 point lead. wins at home 47 of those wins here at Gamble Pavilion. The one concern when we were talking to Gino Oramba this morning about this matchup was maybe there would be a concern breaking Louisville's full, full court pressure. Well if the team can't score they can't set up in the pressure with one made field goal so far in this first quarter. And seven turnovers for Louisville as well. Evans in the traffic but a foul is called. It's not very often you get blocked twice on the same play by two different <laughs> players, but she ends up getting the foul call. It might have to be a Dana Evans night, at least in some way offensively. Oh, I like the fact that they try to get her going with the screen by Asia Durr. I like the call by Jeff Walls because you know there's not going to be help off of Asia Durr because they're so attached to her. And now Don Evans gets, it has the ability to turn the corner with her speed. That's what Asia Durr is going to have to figure out. How can I be productive for my team if I can't score, if I can't get a catch? Well, set some screens. Do the other things that you can do to get your teammates open. Evans puts home the first Louisville point in seven minutes. That was a 19-0 spurt. Remember, this is a Connecticut team that's coming off a 124-point effort against Wichita State this past weekend, the second most points in UConn history. Samuelson, smooth. You use the back screen a little bit, then you come back and get the ball, then you do the side dribble. Carol, what didn't the defender have to do on Lou on that possession? Filthy. <laughs> so it was, it's just filthy. Durr tried to throw it to Carter, and a foul is called against Erica. That's number two. <laughs> now, Jeff Walls did have a very positive attitude about this game. Before the game started. Before the game. I should say that's a fair, <laughs> yeah. it's a very fair point. Okay. I just wanted to wait until that call was made. I believe they switched the ruling on the floor. I thought initially it was a call on Carter. That's what Gino Ariema thought as well. It's been listed for the time being as a foul on Carter. And D. Kantner's initial ruling was a foul on Carter, so there's no change on the call. Going back to what Jeff Walls was saying, though, before the game, you're going to get something good out of this, whether it's the experience of playing in this atmosphere for these players for the first time, getting that high-level test from the number one team on their home floor. So regardless, there were a lot of positives that Jeff Walls was hoping to take away, but he also wanted his team to play very well tonight. That hasn't been the case in the first. Kylie Shook just got something for her highlight reel, a block on Gabby yep. Williams. Now Louisville gets it back off the danger field miss. The nurse picking up Asia Durr. turnovers that Louisville cannot afford. So I, I like what Jeff Walls is trying to do. You don't have to worry about getting Asia Durr the ball if she brings it up. Mm -hmm. So I like the fact they run Horns action and say, okay, let's just put the ball in the hands of our best player and, she, and see if we can make a play. But then you have the unforced error by yeah. Hines Allen with the, with the travel. Samuelson, right past Kylie Shook, and Katie Liu with 12 in the opening quarter.
Lindor set the screen for Kylie Shook that time. And you see the Louisville players' faces as they're walking back down the floor like, what can we do to get a decent shot on the offensive end? Yeah, they look shook. They Pun do, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, they, they do. And, and that can happen to you. That can happen to you playing UConn. It certainly can happen to you here when they just have this incredible offensive onslaught. Louisville will get a shot to close the quarter. You would think. 6.5. Jasmine Jones. End to end will get the two. Some positive to end the close of this opening quarter. But UConn picking up right where they left off this weekend. 24 points in the first, holding Louisville to six. Uh, UConn, beautiful basketball here early on in this game. It's helped lead, or it's helped them get out to this huge lead. They've got six assists on ten field goals. The quick passing, precision in nature, it's just been fun to watch. And they've been doing a lot of it in transition. But you look at UConn and how they pass and the skill set, all of their players can make a play, and that's what makes this team so difficult to defend. Asia Durr, 0 for 4 from the floor, averages nearly 20 per game, and has done very well against top five teams so far this season. Azaray Stevens off the bench, well defended by Fury. Hines Allen. And First finally, it, it, but again, it's another contested jump shot. Yeah. It, it was a nice finish by Hines Allen, but if you're Louisville, you're trying to figure out a way to get something that's a little bit easier than that. Collier a little bit too strong. Fearing and Hines Allen did well at the defensive end that time. Durr, deep three. In and out. 0 for 5. One of the best three-point shooters in the nation. Stevens, the back door to Collier. That was pretty. Post to post pass. I was just going to say, I was waiting. I'm like, is she going to say it or should I? <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed the last play. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Just check out when the guards are. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Well, Hearing with some strong defense on Azaray Stevens there. One thing you know you're going to get from Sam Hearing every time down the floor is some toughness. Nurse still face guarding Asia Durr. Five on the shot clock. Carter is open. Snared by Jones. This last possession, though, was basically a shell drill for Connecticut because Asia Durr was over in the left corner where she is now out of the play, and now it's four on four. And Nurse is sticking right on the hip of Asia Durr. So against Connecticut. Yeah, this is a challenge. So Louisville tries to go with a, a pin down, and Kian Nurse gets on the top side and is able to fight over that. And, and this is something I think Asia Durr will continue to learn as she grows as a player. You have to set up your screens. You have to be patient and wait and fake like you're going one way and then go the other way. With Kia Nurse face guarding you, that means she doesn't want you to catch the basketball. You can play that aggression in your favor by pretending to go one way and then come off the screen. 
kind of like Crystal Dangerfield just did there. Yeah. Stevens a little short that time. And a foul call against UConn. The one thing we have seen from Louisville in the last couple minutes is they're fighting for rebounds on the offensive end and the defensive end. And them fighting and doing that has created some extra possessions for them. Bianca Dunham gives Hines Allen a breather. I mean, if, uh, go ahead, guys. I was just saying, there's one weakness of this UConn team. I would say it's a phys physicality across the front line, or the lack thereof. And that's, so, that's somewhere, that's a place that you can try and make hay if you're an opponent against them, is to be very physical across that front line. You think that has anything to do with a little bit of lack of depth for UConn on that front? Just because they only rotate about six players, maybe Megan Walker seven. No, I just think that that's who they are. The players can be pushed around. So okay. I mean, Azure Stevens can be pushed around. Um, you know, Gabby Williams is a little bit stronger, but she's more based on athleticism. Okay. I think it's just the personnel more than anything. Yeah. Williams has eight points now. UConn does not have a bruiser in their front line. Yeah. Finally, Asia Durr drills one. Let's see if that's the one that gets her going. Now, we're, we're grabbing for straws in that exercise, right? I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Very it's, much so. It's, we're poking holes, but I'm, I'm, we uh, saw and, and, it in Texas, right? We saw it in yep. Austin. Right. With the physicality. Going to be a Durr foul. But to UConn's credit, too, they've lost the paint battle in one game all season long. They have not been outscored in the paint by anybody except, I think, Rebecca, you were there for the Notre Dame game, and that was one of their few close games that they've played this season. And often, the points they're getting in the paint are in transition. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily like a post-up yeah, that you would fair. think of points in the paint. one will go against Jasmine Jones. But this is one place we've seen Katie Lou Samuelson's game change a little bit. Her freshman year, she was not a contact creator. She would absorb contact, but she was not seeking it. That last possession, she was seeking contact on the drive. Walker is into the game for UConn, setting the screen for Samuelson. And she's always been able to do that. Yeah, but... The other parts of her game, as Rebecca alluded to, have grown. And because she's still so great at that, shooting the basketball, she's turned herself into a complete player. It's been fun to watch. Lou has 15. Louisville has 13 so far. So Lou's beating Louisville. Lou is beating Louisville. Gotcha. Indeed. You did you fist pound for that one, but Thanks. nice work. A lot doesn't get by me, Adam. <laughs> I'm just happy you were still checked in. Because, you know, yes. we were talking about guards, so I figured you were into it. He should turn with the rebound. Here is Jones. Fearing the offensive rebound. What a backdoor that was from Williams to Samuelson. That looked like there was no space there to get that pass. Evans out of control. Time out on the floor. UConn looking sharp. ESPN just... ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And KFC's $5 fill-ups. Real meals for just five bucks. They're finger licking good. John, Nell, and Andy in the studio coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. We'll unveil the class of 2018 for the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Meanwhile, UConn simply executing their game plan to perfection tonight. UConn's defense has made Louisville abandon the ship offensively because there is no offensive flow on the Well, they, they've exposed Louisville's inability to score when Durr can't put points on the board. Adam, it's been Lou versus Lou. Back to you. 
Katie Lou on cue, getting the shot. Brick will talk to you in about three and a half minutes. It's been all UConn early so far. And Samuelson doing the brunt of the damage. Outscoring the entire Louisville bunch. Oh. I'm feeling some kind of way. I think Rebecca's pregame speech was much better than mine. <laughs> and I'm feeling some type of way already right now. Oh, those threes working. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go back and work, work on my speech. What are you gonna do out, out west? That'll, that'll be the interesting thing next week. Yeah, we're in, uh, we're in Eugene. I can't wait to go to Eugene. Well, I can give you some help on the pregame speech, Kara. Actually, <laughs> Louisville did speak with their team psychologist two days ago, and, and the team, the sports psychologist had a couple of good ideas for them. They said, write down each of you two things that this upcoming game makes you feel. And they said the preeminent words that they came up with were excited and nervous. And not nervous as in we're intimidated to go into UConn's house, like excited, nervous, happy, nervous. But I love that they're using a sports psychologist, a sports psychiatrist to kind of get into their mind and overcome some of the, the big challenges. And we'll see if they can come up with some of that mental strength in the second half. Did you use this sports psychologist? Never in college. Never no. in college, no. You? Um, I went one time. And I sat in this like little pod thing and I never went back. <laughs> but I know it helps some people. I don't want to laugh at the <laughs> but it, it just wasn't for me. I had to sit in this, I don't know what it was supposed to be, relaxing? I don't know what it was. You sat in a pod? I sat in like a pod, like a, it, I don't know how to describe it. It was like a sleep pod Sense thing. Depriva sensory deprivation tank or something, something like that? Something, yeah. I never went back. Ooh, Crystal Dangerfield. High IQ, says Gino Ariema. Asia Durr fouled. A slick move to get the shot. Nurse, her second foul. Uh, excellent action here. Just the ball fake freezes Maisha Hines Allen and allows her enough space to get into the lane for the layup. Super Tuesday presented by Boost Mobile coming your way. Two great matchups. You'll see Trey Young and Oklahoma still in the top 25. They've been struggling as of late. Seventh ranked Texas Tech is the host. Then number one is Virginia. Despite the loss the other night in overtime against Virginia Tech, they'll go on the road to take on Miami. This is what the freshman record breaker is up to, still leading the country in points and assists per game. But Oklahoma coming off a loss the other day to Iowa, Iowa State. On the women's side, Baylor still in the top five right now out of the Big 12. Another assist from Gabby Williams to Katie Lou Samuelson. Texas and Baylor will square off for a second time next Monday night. That'll be part of our big Monday double header from Austin. And then we'll have UCLA, Oregon. Here's Fuhring. Shot clock winding down. Carter has to hoist. I don't think she realized that that ball had never touched the rim on the Fuhring attempt. Extra pass, Stevens. It'll stay with Connecticut. Time and time again, you see Connecticut players when they have their own shot they're still going to make the extra pass to their teammates and such an unselfish culture that we've seen from Connecticut over the years. Ends up being a Jasmine Jones foul there. I was in Oakland on Saturday. I was watching Warriors Spurs, two of the best and prettiest, I would say, offensive teams in the NBA. High level passing leads to high level shooting. And it's just so funny to look at each level. You can see the teams that are separated on the men's basketball side at the NBA level and here and here we're seeing the team that separates itself in its passing and unselfishness that's UConn. 
You know, I always think it's funny, Adam, because people in basketball talk about how stylistically the Warriors play and how beautiful it is and how everyone's starting to play like the Warriors. UConn's been doing this for years. Yeah. It's like the Warriors are starting to play like UConn. That's a, I, I think it's a, actually a very fair way to say that. That was a nice extra pass by Jasmine Jones, furing with the bucket. Now, Jasmine Jones has competed. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she's probably been, her and Furing have probably been the two best competitors on Jeff Walls' roster here in the first half. Dangerfield from deep. I think Jeff Walls is telling Dee Kantner that you have to allow my player to get clean possession of the ball to inbound it. There are about three and a half seconds left when Dangerfield made that shot, and the ball was kind of, I don't think on purpose, but knocked out of the hands of Sam Furing as she was trying to inbound. Let's go over to Holly Rowe with Gino Arieva. Gino is in a hot debate right now with Chris Daly, his assistant. What is this hot topic of debate between you and Chris right now? Well, I should have known better. She told one of our guys to guard so-and-so, and I told them to guard somebody else. And as usual, um, you know how this works. I'm wrong. I was going to say, you are in the Hall of Fame, but I believe Chris might be yeah, the right one. Okay. That's how we keep the peace here. I just go, I'm wrong. You haven't been wrong about Kia Nurse face guarding Asia Door. Tell me that decision, what factors led up to it, and how you think it's played out. Well, I mean, she's such a good player that uh, I, I think she's really, really hard to guard once she gets the ball in her hands. And uh, we just did a great job defensively of making it difficult for her to get the ball. And then when she did get it, we really helped each other a lot. But like I said to, to our team, it, it's it's going to be our offense that can win this game for us because we're not going to be able to shut them out. They're going to Eventually, they're going to start scoring points. We know that. So we got to execute our offense. And I'll tell you what, I thought we'd... That's one of the better halves of basketball we've played. Good, a rare compliment, yeah. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, 20 point lead, pretty solid for Gino Oriema's bunch, trying to extend the nation's longest home court win streak. Andy Landers, Nell Forner, and the somewhat tan John Brickley in the studio. Welcome back to Big Monday, presented by Joseph A. Bank. Number one, looking like it. Leading number four, Louisville at the half by 20. Impressive performance once again. Every time we see one of these UConn games, they look sharper and sharper. They've continued to get better as the season's gone on. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo. You guys talked about Asia Durr in the open. We assumed that she was going to be a big factor. She's been held in check so far. Yeah, I mean, you knew that if Louisville had a chance to come in here and pull off the upset, that their big gun, Asia Durr, was going to have to put up a big number scoring-wise. And she hasn't in the first 20 minutes. And a large part of that is due to UConn and what they've been able to do defensively to Asia and on the offensive end, it's just been pretty basketball for the UConn Huskies, sharing the ball and getting Katie Lou Samuelson involved. She's been virtually unstoppable on that end of the floor. Of course, it often starts with her ability to hit the three-point shot, which she does better than most in the country. But she's been showing what she can do, not only with her scoring from the outside, but she's had dribble penetration. She's assisted on baskets. She's attacked the rim. She has absolutely been stellar here in the first half. Kia Nurse had the assignment on Asia Durr for most of that opening 20 minutes. Asia Durr was held to one of six from the floor and just six points. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, I spoke with Louisville coach Jeff Walls about that at halftime, and he said, you know, we just got stagnant on offense. There's a lot of things we can do to help Asia Durr in that situation. We have to run better offense. He said, we also need to lift that offense and get some more backdoor cuts and give her some more opportunities and some more help off of, scre off of screens. See, here's what happens off of screens, whether they're on ball or off ball variety. UConn can switch them. So it negates the impact of the screen. And sometimes it's an even better defender switching on to Asia Durr when Kia Nurse switches off. Dangerfield misses the three. 
Now, Gabby Williams was talking about that the other day. Why are you guys so good, or why have you been so good defensively? And it's because we have four or five on the court at any time that can defend one through five. I mean, you can defend just about every position with almost any combination of the six or seven that UConn has out there. Foul called against Gabby Williams. That's a good point, too. Kia Nurse was guarding Asia Durr for most of the half. Gabby Williams is the defensive player of the year from a season ago. Yep. Kia Nurse in that first half did not attempt a field goal, didn't attempt a free throw, but her minutes were as valuable as anyone else's because of the defensive work she did on Asia Durr. Collier. In and out from Jones. And a whistle and a UConn foul as Carter came flying in for the board against Williams. Continuing to attack the offensive glass. They had six offensive boards in that first half. Granted, there was a lot of missed shots to go get, but they've been able to get some. Here's Durr. Yeah, nice, nice little elevator action. Durr had a cold start, missed her first five shots. She's made her last couple of attempts. Same play. Another good look. Can you describe the elevator action for me? If you're late, man, those doors are closed <laughs> on you. They're closed I love on it. You. <laughs> and that shot's going up. Contact between Samuelson and Jones. It'll be a Jones foul for third. Oh, look in the right of your screen. Those elevator doors close on Kia Nurse. And now she has to take a longer route circuitous route and that's a little bit late it's still a tough shot I mean even though they ran the play well Asia Durr made a tough shot forced the pass that time I think Holly on the ladder may have had a shot at that ball <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone else in the building did what is Holly gonna do with that ladder after we're we're done here at camp with the game? is that a carry that a, on is that, I was gonna say is that take a take home, home for carry you on. <laughs> you can take that on the train with you right Here's Williams. Heinz Allen patiently waited for an opportunity there. I was about to say, what's she waiting for? She has the matchup. I thought she was going to pass it. Uh, that was an excellent fake by Heinz Allen and take advantage of posting up Kia Nurse. What did Jay Warren ever tell Holly Rowe at the half? He said, we're going to have to continue to put points on the board because we're not going to be able to hold Louisville the way we did in the first half to only 29%. This could be a factor. Jasmine Jones just picked up her fourth foul. You talked about it. She really competed in that first half. And now Heinz Allen will pick up the foul, sending Collier to the free throw line. <laughs> Collier off a season high 26 in that impressive UConn performance against Wichita State. Valentine's Day nights, bringing you the crossover. Can't wait for Hubie Brown, the former Duke assistant, 
working with Jay Billis at Duke for Virginia Tech. And Duke Clippers and Celtics will feature Mark Jackson and Dick Vitale and our buddy Ryan Rucco. I'll be at Auburn for Kentucky Auburn with P.J. Carlissimo and Dan Dockett, so I don't know what's going to happen while I'm sitting at that table. And then Bill Walton and Doris Burke on the call for Warriors and Trailblazers. That's our crossover coming up on Wednesday. UConn running. Kia Nurse with her first points. During defended by Samuelson there. Samuelson running the floor. Doing it at both ends, and UConn back up 20. Collier running the left lane, drew the defender. And that was the reason Samuelson was wide open coming from the right side. I think the elevator door was pretty wide open on that one for Katie Lou. <laughs> Durr over Nurse. The shots are starting to fall for Asia Durr now. Timeout Louisville. We'll step aside as well. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Hey, seven nights from now, we got a pretty good one. Shaquayla Thomas, Lexi Brown, two of the great scorers in the ACC for Florida State Duke. Baylor and Texas in the rematch. You'll see big Kalani Brown go to work. And then the three of us are going to West for an outstanding guard matchup. Canada against Ionescu. A triple header of huge women's basketball programs next Monday night on ESPN2. Cannot wait for that one. I've never been to Eugene, Oregon. Have you? I never have, no. First time in a couple of years. Got a good restaurant yeah. for, for us uh, hosting, too. I'm so excited about that <laughs> promo. Women's basketball fans, tune in on Monday. UCLA is hot right now. They've won 10 in a row since the loss to Oregon at Pauley Pavilion. Hines Allen the rebound. Smooth looking hook that time from Maisha Hines Allen. <laughs> Collier off target. Samuelson a little too strong. Gives it to Dangerfield. Gabby Williams with another chance for Connecticut. Fouled by Fearing. To a timeout. There's our buddy Jeff Dufine's daughter Allison pumped up for tonight. I should have known better. She told one of our guys to guard so-and-so, and I told them to guard somebody else. And as usual, uh, you know how this works. I'm wrong. Talking about Chris Daly, the longtime assistant, 32nd season under Gino Ariema, inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. You heard the reveal from Rick, Andy, and Nell at halftime, part of this excellent class of coaches and players and contributors for the Hall of Fame. Well, you know, Gino Ariam is in the Hall of Fame for good reason. He is a brilliant man, but in my heart, I believe that this UConn program would not be what it is without Chris Daly. She has been the yin to his yang. She is the disciplinarian on this team. In fact, a couple of players told me a few years ago they had to do a PowerPoint presentation to convince Chris Daly that they should be allowed to wear headbands finally in the 2000s. So she has been the disciplinarian. She is the loving mom figure behind the scenes. She is so much of this UConn program. And Rebecca, I'm just curious, what are the very difficult rules that she enforced when you were here? Well, of course, there's no nail polish. If anyone has a tattoo, that has to be covered. You weren't allowed to wear jeans. You had to wear stockings if you were wearing a dress. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that was important to her. Part of that outstanding Hall of Fame class, which was named today for next year. Tina Thompson, congratulations to her. She sent us a quote earlier today saying that she was very honored to be part of it. A true privilege to have her name reside in the home where so many of the greats of our game are housed. 
Obviously, just when you say Hall of Fame, it means a whole lot to what this program and what this sport means. And Chris Daly is a big part of what this sport currently means, not only at UConn, but nationally. So I'll give a shout out to Mickey DeMoss, sure. one of my assistant Your coaches assistant at coach. the University of Tennessee. Seal Berry, for those Louisville fans that are watching, I know she means a lot to Louisville basketball as well. An excellent, high quality Hall of Fame class. Number one, UConn, one of the two unbeaten teams in college basketball. Mississippi State, number two in the country, is the other. Riding the longest home win streak in the country at 75 consecutive wins between Hartford and Storrs. The third longest all time. Gabby Williams now has a double-double. The sixth of her season and the 26th of her career. Sent Collier to the line off the foul. Earlier tonight we saw Nafisa Collier miss a free throw. That's the first time she's missed a free throw in eight games. 80% shooter. Good call, Rebecca. Good jinx right there, I think. Automatic. Super Tuesday presented by Boo Mobile. You'll see Trey Young in action. We'll see if Texas Tech gets back on track at home. The new number one team of the country is Virginia. Despite the loss on Saturday, they'll have to go on the road to take on Miami. It's all part of Super Tuesday presented by Boo Mobile. Dura off target. Uh, Williams and Dangerfield collided. Dangerfield's just got to let her big get that rebound. She'll let you have some of these assists. You let her get the rebound. <laughs> that was like you throwing an elbow when I was going for my lunch today. That's right. Samuelson buries another one. Just another one of those type of nights. Collier and Samuelson have outscored Louisville on their own. And this has become expected from Katie Lou Samuelson. Third person on the team foul. Nurse just picked up her third foul. She'll come in, uh, come off the floor rather. Azare Stevens is back in. Don't let that line fool you. Two points. That's it for Gabby Williams. Her contributions on defense have been huge against Asia Durr. Nurse fouls out. Now you have the reigning defensive player of the year on you. Asia Durr does. That's what Carol was talking about earlier. Even when you switch off of Asia Durr, sometimes you have a potentially even better defender on her. You know, I think what... Well, there's a lot of things that make this UConn team special, okay? There's a lot of characteristics, but you're always looking for a weak point in a team on either end of the floor. Right? Okay, this player's guarding me now. I'm going to be able to do this. Or this player's in the game. I'm going to be able to get open. Or I'm going to be able to get a shot up. There, there's not a player that you can relax against. And that goes both ways. And when you have players that are two-way players and they comprise your roster, and then they play with this relentless approach, there are no breaks. And that's how UConn wins, because there are no breaks in any possession. And there hasn't been a team in the country yet this season that's been able to handle that. Samuelson had that one blocked by Fearing. Carter for three. A good looking shot. Well, Carter's had some quality looks because UConn has decided to give her those quality looks, right? right. They're the player that, that, or she's the player that they're electing to leave open. But she's made two of her six threes, which is not a terrible percentage. She's 38% on the season. She's a decent three-point shooter. Yeah, she is, but that's who they're yes. deciding yeah. to say, hey, we're going we're gonna to let you shoot it. Evans on the push. Danger field. Ahead to Williams. That'll count. Still a 17-point advantage for the number one team in the country.
Getting set for the start of the fourth quarter at Gamble Pavilion, where Louisville looks to extend the longest home court win streak in the country and the third longest all time. Adam Amin, Rebecca Lobo, Carol Lawson, let's go over to Holly Rowe. Well, Jeff Walls was very encouraging in that last huddle for Louisville. He said, you know, we had nine turnovers in the first quarter. We only have 15 now for the game. And he said, you know, that lets me know that when we get the ball secured, we're actually able to run some actions. He said, we can do a better job here, but we've got to get stops. He said, we're, we're jogging on defense, and they're beating us to spots. They need to full out sprint every opportunity and get stops against this mighty UConn offense. And Holly, that whole third quarter was played in something like a seven-point window. So UConn never really blew out Louisville. They didn't truly separate as we've seen them do against a lot of other teams. In fact, this is as close as Louisville has been since that early UConn surge in the first quarter. But it just feels like one of those suffocating UConn nights where they wear you down over the course of four quarters. Stevens with the bucket. Finds Allen short. Danger field off target. Out of bounds to Louisville. These two teams played in a couple of national championship games, 2009 and 2013. Met in the inaugural American Conference Championship game back in 2014, when these two were still in the same league together. That was the last time they had met. In fact, the only Connecticut win, as Durr hits a three, was the first ever meeting. I beg your pardon, first Louisville win, and only Louisville win was the first ever meeting back in the 1993 opening round of the NCAA tournament. And it's been 16 straight wins ever since for UConn. That UConn lost to Louisville was also the last time UConn has lost back-to-back -back games. 1993. That's incredible. Beautiful finger roll by Gabby Williams. That loss, I think, is the only double-digit seed to beat Connecticut in the NCAA tournament in their program history. Is that your freshman year? That was my sophomore, sophomore year. year. I was a big part of the reason Connecticut lost to Louisville. That game. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we're done tonight, Sports Center over on ESPN after Baylor, Texas, Kenny Bain and John Anderson will have more on Johnny Manziel's interview with Good Morning America, speaking about his bipolar disorder, whether or not he has a future in the NFL. Huge matchup tonight between Blake Griffin, now with the Pistons, and Anthony Davis. And we'll take a look at the inspiring Andrew Jones of Texas basketball, his battle with leukemia, all coming up on Sports Center at night tonight. Bobo, give me a sense of this program when you first entered it. Before it was the national championship powerhouse that we've come to know UConn as. What was it like for you as a freshman, maybe playing here for the first time? Well, Connecticut had just gone to their first Final Four in a very unexpected way. They were a power in the Big East, but not a national power yet. That wasn't to come until about 1993-4, and then uh, my senior year, 94-95. That was when the team finally got their first ever number one ranking. Allen has done some really good things here in the second half. Yep. She continues to compete, you know, attacking the rim. She was you know, held down in the first half, but here in the second half, she showed a little bit more of what she can do. Well, both Hines Allen and her yes. were in that third quarter. It started to look like more of themselves, and sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to feel your way into a game, certainly with the extra attention being paid to Asia Durr. She had to figure it out a little bit through the first couple quarters. 
Well, Maisha Hines Allen really wanted to play well tonight because she is from just down the road, about two and a half hours south, Montclair, New Jersey. She has 30 friends and family. I mean, we're talking mom, sister, aunties, uncles, cousins. She has a lot of fans in attendance here, and I know she wanted to perform very well. This is a rare opportunity for her but to play so close to home here at UConn. Playing in her 130th career game for the Louisville Cardinals, one of the all-time great scorers in Louisville history, sitting at fourth all-time. Samuelson. What a rebound by Stevens. UConn. Stevens. When you're 6'6", six, six, and as long as she is, you can't really go over the back right there and get cold. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the logic. <laughs> Explain it to me. That was a very high level of difficulty on that shot by Asia Durr. I mean, let's be honest, tonight, a lot of her shots have been high degree of difficulty because UConn's made them that, but she is capable of making those types of shots. What, what a play by Asia Durr. 12 of her 18 in the second half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905, and in part by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. So this isn't like a definitive list of top players in the country, but it's a nice starting point. We start with Asia Durr and Sabrina Ionescu and go from there. Well, Kalani Brown has been a dominant force for Baylor in the Big 12. Gabby Williams, I mean, she doesn't have the same offensive numbers as some of the top player of the year candidates, but she's terrific. And then Asia Wilson down in South Carolina. It's a good starting point for that list. Holly, you got a chance to see Oregon in action in person last week. Well, that's right. I'm excited for you guys to go to Eugene. I think they have some special things planned for you next uh, Monday night. Wow. But more importantly, Tell I finally more. got a look at um, uh, Satu Savali from uh, the freshman out of Germany. She is spectacular for Oregon. She's a true freshman. She is spectacular. And then Ruthie Hebard is just unbelievable. 12 for 12 this weekend. She had a double-double. Um, another sophomore for Oregon that is just playing really great at that with Sabrina Ionescu and my take um, her tight. Yeah, my take is Orla. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> but they are they're incredible. Like Kelly yeah. Graves doing a great job. I can't wait to see Corey Close coming in there with Jordan Canada and now their great uh, firepower with Winnie Billings. He brought a 29 in their win against Washington State the other day. Ionescu, by the way, now has nine triple doubles in her career, so she is the all-time triple. We're going to get to see the all-time triple double leader in women's basketball history. Like, that's that's something pretty cool that we're going to see next week. I'm eager for our surprise. I, uh, I, uh, Holly with the tease. Does Holly know the surprise? It, it, she made I it sound like surprise. she knew the surprise. Oh. Yeah. I do know the surprise. You're going to love it. Yes. Awesome. Holly Rowe, the inside info, digging it. Carter with a tough take. Azaree Stevens with a tough rebound and a foul against Louisville. You know, there's so many. One of the things, one of the things that's difficult, and as Adam said, not a definitive list, but you look at a team like UConn, right? It's like, how do you pick? How do you not have Katie Lucille on that not, list? Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, Nafisa hasn't had the season she had a season ago, but she's having a terrific season. Yeah. 
You know, the thing I think that's still really hard to quantify is defensive impact. And players that are so good on that end, like a Gabby Williams, in general get shortchanged in awards because there's there's not a good way to, to quantify how they're impacting. You, know, you see the, the NBA just about every night. They have things like defensive win shares, like there are yes. metrics at that level where you know, even if you're not scoring, you're making a major impact at that end of the floor. You don't necessarily have something like that definitive, but more often than not, we're seeing the players that fit that mold. Well, yeah, and because a lot of defensive statistics uh, man, Kitty Lou's face is taking a man. Beating. The last this month year, for her. Yeah, this year, right? Katie Lou had her uh, eye, game, the, yeah. the, the an elbow to the eye. <laughs> Jones is done for the night for Louisville. <laughs> Nurse, the shot fake. And Louisville's been able to get it down to 14 a few times, but they haven't been able to yeah. cut it closer than that. They've got the chance here, me. Just under three to go. This is not insurmountable. Playing against UConn here in Gamble is not going to be easy, but it's doable. It does feel like if they're going to make a run, it's their last chance to make that push. Heinz Allen working on a double-double tonight. Here's Durr. Around and out. That would have cut it to 11. <laughs> Foul called against Erica Carter. It does feel like Louisville settled in in the second half, and the pace wasn't too much for them, and they were able to look like themselves a little bit. I mean, that first quarter, UConn just blitzed them. Well, Louisville has outscored Connecticut since that 24-6 first quarter where Connecticut was so dominant. Well, Jeff Wells actually said that same thing here in the huddle just a few minutes ago. He said to his team, I don't know whose idea it was to spot them 20 points to start this game, but it was a bad idea. The players <laughs> got a laugh. I think they're going to walk out of here feeling like, hey, we did compete in the final three quarters, but a disastrous first quarter, just not playing with the pace and confidence that they have been in the last three quarters. Man, could that be the Campbell effect? Could that be going into this type of environment? I think it was Rebecca's pep talk. I've already made that call. Well, I've, I've, I've got that saved for the next time I need to get myself yeah. going for, for any reason. I'm going to listen to that again. Don't, don't just delete mine. Bro. <laughs> <Didn't work. laughs> and all the energy that UConn had early that was fed to them in part by the crowd translated on the defensive end for them. Sure. It wasn't just, you know, getting things going on the offensive end. It was what they were able to shut down defensively. Fortuitous bounce to Azure Stevens for the two. Oh, I thought that was a good pass. She did it on purpose. Yeah. You don't think she did it on purpose? Do you think? Or no? I, I, I mean, I, I would love to see it again. I yeah. thought that was a pretty slick bounce. It's a fortuitous pass. Tap pass. <laughs> I just wanted to match fortuitous with Kara circuitous I earlier more than anything else. <laughs> there you go. They're rhyming. This is as close as they've been, down to 11, since that early UConn surge. Another rebound for Heinz Allen. Williams the rebound. This might be the capper for the Knights. Yeah. They're a little bit slow to get up after that layup. Limping back up the floor. Only so many superlatives you can use. Number one, still unbeaten.
And the win streak at home is 76 in a row. UConn's 99-game home court win streak stands as the longest. Stanford number two at 82. And UConn now 76 straight. And 48 in a row here at Gamble Pavilion. Jeff Waltz's team had a 3 to nothing lead, and that's when UConn went on a 19 to nothing run. They led 24 to 4 at one point. Louisville settled in later, but it was too late. A dynamic Connecticut surge in the first quarter was enough to make it 25 and 0. Let's go over to Holly Rowe with Kia Nurse. Well, Kia, when did you know that you'd have the assignment of guarding one of the nation's deadliest shooters tonight in Asia Dern? How did you attack that assignment? Uh, when we went into practice, we obviously watched our film before the game, and uh, we had our scouting report ready. So it was a team defense effort today. We, we did a good job making sure that the help was there when we needed it. And, I mean, she's a tough guard, but uh, it was a good job for us. Keys to face guarding like that because you made things very difficult. I mean, trying to play them in the direction that they want to go, obviously knowing um, their strong hands from their weak hands or knowing their uh, tendencies on both sides. But um, when you have a help on the backside like I did tonight, it's easy to kind of get up and defend them that way. Louisville played much better in the third and fourth quarters. How did you guys maintain your separation? I think we did a good job of trying to get stops and scores going both ways and execute our offense, understanding that there was going to be things that were open, but trying to give up the good shot for the great shot. Well, thank you very much. No worries. Thanks, Holly. Thanks. She held Asia Durr, along with the rest of her teammates, to 7 of 19 from the floor tonight. Durr ended up with 20 points, but it took 19 shots. In about four months, it'll be official. CD, as she's known, will be a Hall of Famer. She's with Holly Rowe. Well, you know how they have those bracelets, WWJD. Mine is, what would Chris Daly do? So congratulations. Thank you. The crowd gave you a standing ovation when you came out at halftime after learning you'd gone into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. What did that mean to you, Chris? Well, it's a little embarrassing. You know, we're in the middle of a game. But, you know, our fans are, are great. They, they appreciate everything that, that we do. And, and